And now to a very serious issue which just over two weeks ago, Seven's Sunday Night and Nine's 60 Minutes tackled on the same evening in remarkably similar ways. It's one of the greatest scandals in medical history and tonight thousands of women will be sick with worry about the toxic time bombs in their chests. Right now across the country thousands of Australian women are worried sick. They're living with the terrible possibility that a toxic time bomb is ticking away inside their bodies. Sick with worry, toxic time bombs, great phrases aren't they? The stories were about hundreds of thousands of breast implants sold globally by French manufacturer PIP. Two years ago, it was discovered that to save money, the manufacturer had been using cheap silicon fillers not approved for medical use. If you or a loved one had a PIP breast implant, and more than 6,000 Australian women do, you might have been worried sick before you saw the programmes. You certainly would have been afterwards. But what Ashley didn't know, what no woman was ever told, is that the implants Australian regulators had approved were shoddy, prone to rupturing, leaking potentially toxic silicon into their bodies. Jodie and 300,000 other women around the world learned that their breast implants were potentially toxic. Then, in 2010, French investigators paid a surprise visit to his factory finding vat after vat of a cheap mattress filler called Silaprene. 60 minutes, said the factory. Is hiding a terrible, toxic secret. Bicelone, Silaprene and Redorsal, commonly used for rubber tubing, computer components, even mattress filler. Scary stuff. Both programs interviewed women understandably concerned that the industrial silicon in their breast implants had affected their health, or worse still, their babies. But it's no coincidence that both reporters used the weasel phrase, potentially toxic, because they both knew perfectly well that so far, in the words of Australia's Therapeutic Goods Administration, or TGA, Testing has demonstrated that the silicone gel utilised in the PIP implants supplied in Australia and the UK is not cytotoxic nor likely to raise the risk of cancer. In one test, the French found that the PIP gel caused irritation. When repeated in Australia, the test has proved negative. In the words of the Australian Society of Plastic Surgeons... The TGA have not uncovered any new evidence from their investigation into PIP implants that prompt us to recommend urgent removal. Yet astonishingly, neither program passed on this crucial information to its viewers. The nearest 60 minutes came to it was in this exchange with Dr Daniel Fleming, a breast augmentation specialist who's on the panel of experts advising the TGA. If that was any other implant, I would know that what was in it was medical grade silicone. I have no idea what's in that. That's exactly why we need to do the tests that we have been doing. We need to continue to do the tests to see if the non-medical grade silicone has any health consequences. If Dr Fleming seems irritable, it's because that was near the end of a combative interview that lasted nearly two hours. Yet 60 Minutes didn't let him spell out in the programme what testing had already shown. Unusually, Dr Fleming made his own video of the original interview, so we know what he told Alison Langdon many times over. Tests have been done by the UK authorities, by the French authorities, and now by the Australian authorities too, to find out whether the gel is toxic in any way. And all of those tests have shown that it is not toxic. 14 seconds. Yet in a 14-minute segment, 60 minutes couldn't find time for it. As for Sunday night, at the end of its Toxic Time Bombs segment, Chris Bath said this. We asked the Therapeutic Goods Administration for an interview, but they refused. That's true, but Sunday night did have a government response they could have used. The TGA tells MediaWatch... The Department of Health and Ageing, which includes the TGA, arranged for an interview with Australia's Chief Medical Officer, Professor Chris Bagley. The reporter, producer and camera crew travelled to Melbourne to interview Professor Bagley, an interview which continued for two hours. Though brief excerpts of that interview were posted on Sunday night's website, not a second of it was used in the segment itself. Why not? In a long, strongly worded response, which you can read on our website, 
together with some additional comments from us, Sunday night told Media Watch... Because by his own admission, Professor Bagley, who seems a decent man, said he could not directly address the very specific questions we wanted to put to the TGA. In other words, because Professor Bagley didn't answer every question Sunday night asked, it felt no obligation to use the answers he did give. And he certainly did spell out the TGA's testing programme and the reassuring results to date. Everyone accepts that testing should continue, and there's certainly debate about what to do in the meantime. The French government now recommends that all PIP implants should be removed, and will cover the cost. And both programmes interviewed respected surgeons here and overseas who believe that's the best course to follow. So you're adamant that any woman who has PIP implants should have them removed? Absolutely. If your mother or your sister or your girlfriend had these, would you tell her to take them out? Yes, I would, because uh, we just don't know anything about these implants which are made from uh, lower-grade silicon, and I would rather have them out. So, asked Rani Sadler on Sunday night... Why is the Australian government refusing to order their removal from women here? Reasonable question. And there's a reasonable answer, which you may or may not agree with. Unfortunately, Sunday night didn't tell us what it is. And once again, 60 Minutes only allowed Dr Fleming to half answer it. If removing these implants was a harmless procedure with no medical or health care consequences, what you say might be a reasonable proposition. But it isn't. Why not? We weren't told. 60 Minutes filmed a woman having her implants removed. Alison Langdon told us... It's a straightforward operation. Though no surgery is risk-free, removal of breast implants is indeed straightforward. But the majority of women will want their old breast implants replaced with new ones. And as Dr Fleming told 60 Minutes, that is riskier. Inevitably, some women will end up worse off. There will be a high complication rate because there's a higher complication rate with secondary surgery than there is with primary surgery. So you don't want to undertake secondary surgery unless it's absolutely necessary. Once again, that response wasn't used. At the end of her report, Alison Langdon says this. Meanwhile in Europe, they've already begun removing thousands of the implants at government expense. Medical authorities there stress that the risk of leaving them in far outweighs the risk of taking them out. Well, we're not aware of any medical authority, even the French, that stresses that it's much more dangerous to leave unruptured implants in than to take them out. Some say precisely the reverse. The British National Health Service advises doctors... On the available data, women in the UK should not be advised to seek explantation in the absence of clinical symptoms. We're not denying for a moment that many women are convinced they've been made sick by their implants and feel the government has ignored them. Yet if their implants are ruptured or if they're really anxious, public hospitals will take them out for free and there are Medicare benefits to help pay for private operations. In the segments they put to air, 60 Minutes and Sunday Night failed to give viewers the information they need to make up their minds on a crucial issue. They implied that the Australian regulator is doing nothing, and they helped to scare women with PIP implants out of their wits. We got no response to our questions from 60 Minutes. For Sunday Night's response and lots more on the topic, visit our website. And while you're there, tell us what you think.